Also, the talk will be short as well, it will be limited to five within minutes maximum. <coughs> we are reciting the Surah in Nisa. And in Surah in Nisa, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about uh, many things that, that relate to women and family and uh, inheritance. And in addition to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about uh, uh, jihad and to protect this sharia. Uh, because uh, this sharia, for it to be established, it needs to be protected as well. Any kind of system or law needs protection. Um, we will just go over some ayat quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guides us here and says, وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ يُطَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَةٌ بِعَاقٍ خَفُوا عَلَيْهِ فَلِيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَلِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us that if we want to take care of our children after our death uh, and they are weak, what we need to do is فَلِيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَلِيمٍ We should fear Allah and we should say the righteous things. This, uh, uh, this allows for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of our children after us. Um, <coughs> Also, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالِ ثُمَّ يَتُبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَيْكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees the tawbah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the repentance and forgive those people who, whom if they sin, they come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ قَرِيبٍ meaning as soon as possible. They don't uh, keep on going. Uh, anyhow, whoever makes tawbah and repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before death, فَقَدْ تَابَ مِنْ قَرِيمٍ He has come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soon enough. If he, but you don't know when death is, so this is why uh, a Muslim is required whenever he falls to try to get up quickly and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, he says, يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ The jahala doesn't mean that, jahala means with ignorance. doesn't mean that they did not know that it was a sin. But what it means is that whenever uh, one of us falls into a sin, basically he has forgotten uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's control on him and Allah's punishment and Allah's laws because he's not really aware of this. If he was totally aware of it at the time, he would not do that, correct? We would not do that if we were if we had imagined all these things in front of our eyes at the time. And this is why uh, uh, the, our predecessors say, كُلُّ مَنْ عَصَى اللَّهَ فَقَدْ عَصَاهُ بِجِهَالًا Everyone who has disobeyed Allah, he was ignorant at that, at that point. Uh, he was ignorant at that point because if he actually, actually remembered uh, uh, Allah's might and Allah's commandments, he would not have done that now. <coughs> And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about marriage and uh, that uh, that is the only lawful relationship between uh, the two sexes. Um, and then uh, after he talks about this and he prohibits any other relationship, he says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُبَيْنَ لَكُمْ وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سُنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَيَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ اللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ ويريد الذين يتبون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان ضعيف. As you see, a lot of people look at Islam's the, the, the regulations and law of Islam in this respect in uh, relationship between the sexes they consider it as strict. That's what they consider. Even يعني, uh, if you look at uh, the most strict of uh, people in other religions, they are not. The, their law is very loose. They, there's a lot of mixing between men and women, and you, you find relationships happening. Uh, so they look at our law in the, regards to our relationship between the two sex as strict. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that this is not meant to make it difficult for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ma- made it that way to purify us uh, and to keep us close to Him. Wallahi yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Because if, we, if everything is loose, we fall into sin, and then we are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and away from His mercy. So this is for our own benefit and for our, our own interest. And then he says also, This is actually easier for you. Yes, it looks strict. And those people who don't have these laws, they think their life is easy. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. So it looks easy. 
But, in fact, it puts a lot of burden on everyone when there's no regulation in the relationship between the sex. Uh, it puts a, a, a burden and stress and, and pain on the families. Uh, you'll find people, you find young women taking care of children without any father, without anyone taking care of the children. And these children grow up sometimes as criminals at the end. So the whole community suffers at the very end. And you see diseases uh, spreading in that community. So eventually, uh, it is actually easier for us and for, for, our, uh, for us individually and as a community to follow these laws than to have everything loose. So it is not easy. Uh, the ease is not to have everything loose, but the ease and comfort is in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed now. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, abiding to His laws. And that this is a, a sign of Iman. And those who do not abide by Allah's laws, it's a sign of weakness in the Iman or absence of that Iman. Uh, they don't have Iman. If they don't consider you and take you as a judge in every dispute and every matter that they discuss and argue about. Whenever we have a, a, a problem and we want to see what to do in this matter, we should bring the hadith and ayat and talk about them and, and follow that. If we don't, then Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ By Allah, they are not believers. By Allah, لا يؤمنون. They are not mu'minin. If they don't accept Allah's judgment and the judgment of the Prophet ﷺ in every matter. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that, وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ The next ayah immediately. وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ اِقْتُلُوا أَنْفُسُكُمْ أَوْ اِخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ He says, if I had told them, if I had commanded them to kill themselves or to leave their houses, just abandon their houses, مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ مِّنْهُمْ Only a few of them would do that. Only a few would follow and do that. What does this mean? It means Allah is telling us that I didn't tell you to do something that is above what you are able to do. I didn't tell you to go and kill yourself. I didn't tell you to leave your houses and leave your wealth and leave your money behind. Everything I told you and everything I commanded you to do and advised you to do is within your limits. It is not too difficult. This is the meaning of this ayah. I, uh, Allah says, I didn't tell you to kill yourself or do this and this. And He says, if, I, if, if the commandments were so hard like this, uh, as hard as what is mentioned in this ayah, no one would do it, illa qalilun minhum, except a few people. You'll still find a few people who are willing to follow and to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, when this ayah was revealed, one of the Sahaba says, وَلَوْ أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا لَفَعَلْنَا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ لَنِ عَفَانِ This is what he says. He says, if Allah told us, we would do. But he says, but we thank Allah that he didn't. وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الذي عفان. He says, but if he told us, we would do that. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when, this, uh, when he heard that, he says, إن من أمتي لرجالا الإيمان في قلوبهم أثقل من الجبال الرواسب. He says, in my ummah, there are some men, the iman, the iman is so strong and, 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 and is so strong and, stead, and steadfast more than a, a big mountain, more than a big mountain. Also, Prophet ﷺ says, uh, when this ayah was revealed, uh, He says, if Allah said that, gave such hard commandments, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would be one of the people who would apply this, who would apply, who would apply this. Now, <clears throat> and I, I will finish um, with uh, the ayah that says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ قُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا He said, why don't they look and observe and think about the Qur'an uh, if it were not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it were not the word of Allah, then they would have found, found a lot of differences, a lot of contradictions and differences in the Qur'an. And this is true. You will see that every part of the Qur'an goes in, yani in one line. You won't find any contradiction uh, between the ayat that were revealed over 23 years. Uh, whether, and you won't find any difference in the strength of the language that is used in the Qur'an. A human being when he's trying to write, whether even if he's the best poet 
or writer, you will find that sometimes his writing is very strong and sometimes it's weak. But the Quran is all when it challenged the Arabs, even with one ayah they couldn't bring because it is at the highest level of the Arabic language. Uh, so there's this high level of, uh, 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 of language throughout the Qur'an and you will find also that the laws of the Qur'an don't contradict each other from beginning to end and the meanings, not only the laws but the meanings remain the same from the beginning uh, to end and you will find no contradiction between the Qur'an and anything that is proven to be scientifically sound but proven, not a theory uh, so if it contradicts the Qur'an uh, you, will, you will have to know that either you misinterpreted the Qur'an or it is not a solid scientific uh, piece of knowledge. It's one of the two things. So, uh, this all indicates, and then you see that the Qur'an, there is no, you know, human beings have this emotional variation. One time a person is sad, one time is happy. When he's happy, he's writing about good things. When he's sad, everything looks dark, you know, in his writings. You see this all the time. But the Qur'an from beginning to end, you will find n- there is no this variation because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second surah revealed in the Qur'an, Surah al um, Surah Nun, Allah says, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ أَخِرَ السُورَةٌ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ That this is a reminder for humanity. From the very beginning, Allah is saying this, from the second surah revealed, that this, is a, this will become a reminder for the whole humanity. At the time when this was revealed, it was only Prophet Sallallahu and maybe his wife who are following and listening to this, correct? But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says that this is not this is not going to be just in your family. This will be a remembrance for the whole world. And now we see this that it's a remembrance for the whole world and for every generation to come until the day of judgment. In who are So you don't see that discrepancy. Whatever is stated in the Quran remains true. لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد. So you will never find a single mistake, no matter how long the time has passed after the revelation of the Quran.